The National High School Football Qualifiers are taking place between Ichinan High School and Matsukei's High School, with the current score being 0-1. to Yuichi Izuji is the one with the ball. Contemplating whether to pass or shoot the goal himself, he decides to pass the ball to his teammate Tada who then failed to make a goal. The other school is having a counter with Ryosuke Kira as the lead player. He manages to score a goal making the score 0-2, to making his team the winner. Tada apologizes to his team for not making the goal. Meanwhile, Kira is being interviewed about how he felt being able to play for Japan's under-18 national team. Kira responds that he's got his sights of winning the nationals with his team and says that the reason for his success was having a capable team he could rely on. Izuji's coach made a closing speech for his team. Devastated by the loss, the coach cries while giving his advice to remember the defeat but don't think of it as meaningless but instead to remember it. He then declares that his team is still the best in Japan. While saying this, in Izuji's mind, they are just a team that fell one step short of playing at nationals. After the match, when Izuji is on his way home, he suddenly thinks of Noel Noah and tells himself that he will never be a great hero like him. He then reminisces his childhood days watching Noel Noah play and being inspired by him to play football. He imagined what would have happened if he was the one who kicked the ball, how his fate would have changed. He then says to himself that what-ifs are pointless in football and they didn't lose because he chose for team play and talks that football is a sport played with 11 people. He then shouts and cries because he wanted to win. Isiji arrives home and his mother tells him that he had gotten a letter from the Japan Football Association for a player improvement project. The next day, Isiji arrives at the Japan Football Union building and encounters Kira. Kira tells Isiji that he remembered the other since he was quite a player and had an impressive field perspective and high football IQ. Upon opening the entrance, they saw many players also waiting in the area. A man begins his speech and tells the players that they are chosen based on his criteria alone, and proceeds to introduce himself as Junpachi Igo and his job is to make Japan a team capable of winning the World Cup. He said that he will forge the best striker in the world among the 300 under 18 forwards he chose and in order for him to achieve that, the blue lock facility was created. He then states that all players will live in the building and will strictly follow his regimen and that their careers are over. Ego further emphasizes that if anyone manages to defeat all 299 players and be the one remaining, the last player standing will become the best striker in the world. Shocked by what Ego said, Kira responds that their current teams are their priority and he cannot accept those terms mentioned. All the other players agreed. Ego then responds and asks them if they would rather be a high school champ than becoming the best striker in the world. He then tells the players that he cringes at the look of Japan's future in their hands. Japan may be the best in organizational skills in football but in everything else. They are second rate. Ego then asks the players what is football to them, a sport where you try to score goals in teams of 11 players, and proceeds that that thinking is wrong. He then tells that football is, a sport about scoring goals even at the expense of your teammates. The best player is the one that scores the most goals. Kira responds and tells Ego that what he said was insulting players like Honda, Kagawa, and others that shaped Japan's national lineup and the value of team play instilled is the same for them. Ego then mocks the mentioned players as the squad that has yet to win a single World Cup. He then mentions Noel Noah, Eric Cantona, and Pelé as revolutionary strikers but their extraordinary egoism is what Japan lacks. He then plays a scenario wherein the hopes of all Japan lie in their shoulders. He then states that if they want that rebellious egoism, then they should step through the gate. He then says his last message that football is a sport to develop the players as strikers and think of literally everyone as supporting them and tells them to throw away their common sense because, in football, they are a star. After hearing Ego's words which made Izuji shivered, he decides to step through the gate. The other players also step through the gate with the hopes of becoming the best striker. Izuji is on a bus on the way to the Blue Lock facility. Upon arriving, they were given uniforms with a number and letter by Anri. Izuji is given the number 299 letter Z. The Z states their respective rooms. Izuji then enters the facility and goes to his respective room. Upon opening, he learned that it is a shared room. Kira calls out Izuji tells him that he is relieved to see a familiar face. A shirt then hits Izuji's face. 
Upon removing it, the player apologizes to Izuji and tells him to be careful of stepping. Izuji then finds a sleeping player on the floor. Izuji then changes into his uniform. A player named Gurumu Ijirashi, a second-year forward, introduces himself to Izuji and Kira. Ijirashi then tells them that he was born in a temple and has a promise with his old man to make Ijirashi no inherit the temple if he became a pro player. Ijirashi reveals that he was pumped up by Ego's speech. After talking, Ego appears at a screen stating that everyone in the room will be each other's roommates and rivals. He then reveals that the number attached is their ranking among the 300 players in the blue lock. Their ranking will change based on several factors like going up and down based on the training or the results of their game. And unconditionally, the top 5 players will participate for Japan's under-20 national team for the World Cup and those defeated will be permanently barred from the team. He then tells them that they are looking for Ego, and it will be the ones measured in the facility. Ego then announces a game, tag, where the time limit is 136 seconds and whoever is, it, when the timer runs out will be removed from the team. The first, it, is the lowest among the team, which is Ijirashi. Ego explains that, tag, is just one of many exercises prop players warm up with and the egoism test that he will provide great insight on selfishness behind the strikers. The timer starts, while Ijirashi has the ball. A player talks to him if he really believes what Ego said about Japan's under-20. Ijirashi replies that he doesn't know for sure but he'll do it because if he loses, he will come back to the temple and be a monk. Ijirashi then decides to target Izuji which is only one rank higher than him but Izuji manages to dodge the attack. The other players run away. Kira then voices out that there's no way pros train like this and the reason he entered Blue Lock is to reject Ego's ideology. He then further tells that trying to stake their football careers on a two-minute play of tag is screwed up and affirms that he cannot let Ego destroy his future. While listening to Kira's thoughts, Izuji thinks about his goal to run away and not to get hit. While failing to hit anyone, Ijirashi spots a sleeping guy and decides to change his target. Upon kicking the ball, Gurumu was kicked at the face by the player. The player was then approached by another player and tells him that he hates dirty play and to play fair and square. The player which reveals to be Kunigami, rank 291 was hit by the ball and is now the it. Ijirashi uses Izuji to defend himself, resulting in Izuji being hit by the ball. Only 1 minute and 3 seconds left. Izuji became the third it. Izuji then tries to attack but fails to hit anyone. After failing to hit anyone, he decides to attack Ijirashi which is the lowest rank player. Only 50 seconds left. Izuji still chases Ijirashi. Izuji still hasn't hit anyone and tells himself that he doesn't want to end it like this and let his dream end. The player who hit Ijirashi calls Izuji's attention while restraining Kunigami, giving Izuji a chance to attack Kunigami while arm locking him. Kunigami throws him resulting in him hitting Ijirashi. After that hit, Ijirashi strained his foot and cannot move. Kira then shouts at Izuji and tells him to take the shot. Ijirashi is begging Izuji to spare him and apologizes for aiming at Izuji earlier. Izuji stops at his tracks thinking his next steps that if he tags Ijirashi, he can win but it will end Ijirashi's career. He struggles to make a decision but decides that if he doesn't do it, he will lose. As for him to accomplish his dreams, he needs to destroy the dream of other. Izuji is planning to kick the ball towards Ijirashi. 15 seconds left. Izuji stops and decides to attack those higher than him. After the decision of sparing Ijirashi, Izuji decides to attack others but Meguro. Rank 290 steals the ball from him. 10 seconds left. He decides to go for Kira. 8 seconds left. Kira managed to dodge the attack. 7 seconds left. Meguro tries to attack Kira with his leg but also dodges it. 5 seconds left. Kira runs away and Meguro hits the ball towards Kira's direction. 4 seconds left. The ball is coming towards Izuji's direction. 3 seconds left. While concentrating the ball, he kicks the ball and it hit Kira's face. The timer reaches zero making Kira the last target. Shocked Kira asks Izuji what he had done. Izuji also in shock apologizes to Kira and tells him that the ball came so fast. The game is over. Ego then appears again at the screen and declares that Kira is expelled. Shocked and angry by the result, 
Kira confronts Igo stating that he's throwing away the future of Japan and tells him to expel Igarashi or Izagi instead. Kira then asks what's the point of the game and tells that tag is not football. Igo replies that everything they do at Blue Lock is related to football and tells Kira to look at his environment. He then tells that the room is the exact same proportions as the penalty area and stating that 75% of goals are scored from that area and it is a striker's domain. He also said that if one cannot survive under those conditions, they are not qualified to be strikers. Kira then replies that tag has nothing to do with football. Ego replies that a skill required by the fleeing side is tactical awareness or positioning. As for the pursuer, what they need is not only accurate dribbling but precision to make shots and that's what is optimal in football training. Kira angrily tells that he can't expect to know all that stuff in under 2 minutes and that football lasts more than 90 minutes. Ego replies that an average time a player possesses a ball during a match is about 136 seconds and they were given the exact same opportunity in the tag game. Kira is still confused and tells Ego what he expects him to do in just 10 seconds. Ego replies if that is what he would say if it is a real match Kira was then expelled from the team. Stunned Kira wasn't able to give an answer. Ego then replays the scene and tells Kira that he has one second left to survive. Either shooting it at injured Igarashi and yet he wasted his chance. Ego then tells an imaginary scenario wherein he is in the middle of the match. Standing in a penalty area, his teammate's shot didn't reach the goal and hits his body. When this happens, he already gave up but he didn't notice that by sheer luck the ball falls before him and if he had just tapped the ball, he would be saved from his own mistake. Ego then tells that the one who is, it, in the tag, the one who has the ball, decides who they want to win but also gets to decide who they want to lose and that a striker carries all responsibilities on his back and the one who keeps on attacking until the very second. He then mentions Izagi who instead aimed for injured Igarashi chose to defeat those that are higher than him. And Bachira with the initiative to aim for the strongest player are perfect examples of people who rather do what's best for their team have the tenacity and courage to pursue their own will. And that's the egoism ego is looking for. Ego then expels Kira. Kira still cannot believe he is out. Isagi calls him but Kira gives him an angry look and proceeds to leave the facility. Isagi still thinks why he hit Kira and looks at Bachira. He then approaches him and asks the reason for passing him the ball and if he didn't hit it. Bachira instead would get expelled. Bachira replies that he thought he would kick it so he passed it and tells Isagi that results are everything in the place. He tells Isagi that he believed him so he won. Igarashi then voices out that it is nonsense from the beginning to the end. Hearing this, Ego agrees that it is nonsensical but so is the world. Either you win or lose and that while they are getting excited over mediocre successes, true strikers tread a path of winning or losing everything, every single day in order to keep on surviving. He then asks how it felt for them that they felt true danger and tells them that the football they've played their lives are for weaklings and tells the feeling of victory. Ego then declares that the remaining players have passed the entrance test and their room is designed for no more than 11 people and the 11 players Jingo Raichi, Wataru Kyuan, Okuhito Aiman, Yudai Imamura, Asahi Narahaya, Jin Gagamaru, Gurimo Igarashi, Hayoma Chijiri, Rensuk Kunigami, Meguru Bachira, and Yoichi Izagi will be Blue Locks Team Z. Team Z is doing their regimen which includes running tests and jumping tests. After the training is meal time. Other players are already sleeping but Izagi is seen too nervous to sleep. He then decided to practice on which he encountered Bachira. They decided to play a one-on-one -on -one game. Izagi asks Bachira whether he passed to him thinking that Izagi would get rid of Kira. Bachira responded that there is a monster lurking inside of him who said to pass to Izagi because he also has a monster inside him. Bachira told Izagi that he is glad he came to Blue Lock because he met him. All the players of Team Z were told to gather at the room for an announcement of rankings. Igarashi moved from 300 to 275. Izagi's rank moved from 299 to 274. Ego discussed the blue lock in which it is arranged into five different strata and here are 25 teams ranging from B to Z with each set of five times in a stratum living in the same conditions. After the game of tag, there are only 275 players left. The first selection was then announced. 
somewhere in Japan. The Football Journal is doing an interview on surprise star player Itoshi, a 17-year-old Japanese midfielder who highly detests football in Japan. Though he has no interest in Japanese football, he already has a spot on the Japan national team stating it's not important to him at all. Itoshi makes a bold declaration and promptly leaves the interview. It is revealed that Itoshi is only back in Japan to renew his passport but while leaving the building stumbles upon a press conference for Blue Lock. Reporters bombard Unri and Hirotoshi with questions on the realism and reliability of Blue Lock and Unri responds with confidence that Blue Lock will succeed and definitely fix Japan's broken soccer by creating a hero. This piques the interest of Itoshi. The first selection is explained in detail. It will be a round-robin tourney between the five teams of the fifth stratum, and only the top two teams will advance to the second selection. Another way to advance is to be the top scorer and most dominate player on your team. Tourney rankings are based on points that are awarded dependent on game outcome. A win is 3 points, a draw is 1 point, and a loss is 0 points. Also the amount of points lost by is taken into account to rank teams with the same amount of points. Team Z is taken aback as they realize they will have to play together to advance and then they start debating about who plays what position. Back in the conference hall, Unri talks about the history of Japanese football and how Japan has come so far and gotten so close to the World Cup but always comes out short. With Blue Lock, the dream of being the best in the world is officially revived. A hero must be born and they must lead Japan to victory. That hero will be born from Blue Lock, a facility packed to the brim with people who want nothing more than to be the best. At that moment, Itoshi tells his manager to cancel all his plans for he wants to see what kind of player Blue Lock can create. Team C is playing rock, paper and scissors to see who gets to pick their desired position. Izagi wins the game and chooses to become forward. Shortly after, Igo appears on the TV screen and he begins to re-explain the first selection. A round-robin tourney between five teams, with only the top two teams advancing forward in blue lock. An alternative to survive is to be the top scorer on your team at the end of the selection. With that information given, Igo states the first match Team X vs Team Z of the tourney will begin in two hours. Before the game. Team Z discusses their strategy and how they will center their plays around Izagi, even though they are unsure whether they can rely on him. Even with their doubt they steal themselves and walk out onto the field to face their opponents. Team X vs Team Z The game is set to last for 90 minutes with a break in between. The game starts with Bachira in possession of the ball. Izagi the forward, is having a hard time breaking through the defense of Team X, while thinking of a strategy to pass through Team X's defense. The ball is taken away from him by his teammate Raichi. Kunigami followed. Team X took advantage of the sudden turmoil and confusion of Team Z to steal the ball. However, much to Izagi's surprise, players of Team X also disregarded the idea of team play. All of the players started playing for themselves. Seeing the greedy play style of the players, Izagi remarks that this game isn't football. Players started becoming more physical towards their opponents and teammates as well. Nonetheless, amid the turmoil, someone was able to break through. Baro, in possession of the ball faces Izagi. Baro is from Team X and ranked 250th. Izagi is blocking Baro from passing. To pass Izagi, Baro does a heel flick. This move amazes Izagi, making him unable to react quickly. After that, Baro was able to pass through Kyuan and Imamura with nutmegs. Baro then kicks the ball towards the net. The goalkeeper Iman failed to stop the ball, resulting in the goal of Team X. After Baro's goal, his teammates were ecstatic and joyful. Baro however stated that he is not scoring in this match to make friends. He remarked that his teammate's sole purpose is to make him shine, declaring that he is the one true king. On the other hand, Team Z was not pleased with Team X scoring. Egiguri blamed Ayman for failing as a goalkeeper. Kyuan tried calming the other players, and Raichi blamed Izagi for his incompetence as a forward. Raichi then told Izagi to stick on defense instead. The game resumes. Since Team Z's players were playing selfishly, Izagi decided to pass between himself and Bachira alone. As the ball was going to Bachira, Egiguri stopped it. 
Egiguri told Isagi that Blue Lock's first selection was not about which team wins or loses. Instead, the important characteristic is the will to score as many goals as one can. Unfortunately, the ball was stolen from Egiguri by a player from Team X. To take advantage of Team Z's meltdown and selfish playstyle, players from Team X decided to pass all the balls to Barrow to win. Isigi, seeing Team X playing as a team, considered Team Z's win as hopeless and impossible. Leaving Baro unmarked will allow him to score. However, if all of them covered him, players from Team X will be left open. The game reached a score of 5-0 with Team X in the lead. To make a comeback, Bichira suggested that he and Izagi must score to win. Ter ends with Izagi stating that he must become the foundation for Team Z, like how Baro is the foundation for Team X. Bichira suggests diverting the focus of Team X towards him to create a sneak attack with Izagi. After getting the ball from Bichira, Izagi must run and score a goal. With only three minutes left on the clock, it seems impossible to gain more than five goals to win the game. During the game, Bichira successfully passed the ball to Izagi. Izagi drives the ball and believed that the only thing left to do is to surpass the goalkeeper. Much to his surprise, Baro appears, making Izagi doubt his chances of scoring. Izagi then starts to lose confidence in himself. Raichi and Kunigami then appear, asking for Izagi to pass the ball instead. Izagi believes that he shouldn't pass the ball to survive Blue Lock. Surprisingly, he unconsciously kicks the ball towards Kunigami. Kunigami kicks the ball and scores. The score is now 5 to 1, with Team X in the lead. Raichi, on the other hand, is furious at Izagi for choosing to pass to Kunigami than him. Unlike Kunigami, Raichi is unmarked and in a preferable location. Baro then calls Izagi talentless. Baro stated that a striker who chokes in front of the goal simply does not have what it takes to be won. The buzzer then rings, marking the end of the match. The match ended with a score of 5 to 1. Team X was declared the winner, while Team Z was the loser. After the game, Team Z is changing their clothes. While changing, Raichi stated that Izagia's failure as a forward and striker resulted to the loss of their team. Raichi also said that to win in the next game, he must be the forward. Because of this, other players chimed in their opinions stating that they should be the next strikers. On the other side of the room, Izagi reflects on what Baro told him. Izagi is unsure why he chose to pass to Kunigami instead of scoring by himself. Izagi wants to know how he can be of more help to Team Z. Team Z becomes chaotic, with each player claiming that they should be the striker in the next game. Kyoan then scolds Team Z. Kyoan explains how troubling Team Z's situation has been after losing to Team X. Kyuan explained that losing in their next game will result in the elimination of the whole team. Thus it isn't time for them to be thinking of themselves alone. After that, Team Z wondered what the first selection meaning was. Chidri remarked that it may have been related to playing football from scratch to work on each player's foundations. Izagi then said that he may have understood the purpose of the first selection. Izagi believes that the football by scratch that Ego described is similar or equal to a freestyle game. The chaos brought by the freestyle game, however, was destroyed by Baro when he successfully scored a goal. Baro then became the foundation of Team X. After witnessing Baro's sheer talent, his teammates improved their play by following Baro's lead. Izagi noted that a foundation is what Team Z needs to win. Team Z needs an overwhelming talent to carry the team towards victory. The first selection explains the importance of having a top-notch striker for a team to succeed. Ego then appears on the screen and tells Team Z that their conclusion is correct. Also, he showed the results of today's match and each team's rankings. Team V is first, X is second, W is third, Z is fourth, and Y is fifth. Ego then changes the topic to the importance of having a weapon. Every striker carries a weapon. A weapon that disrupts the opposite team's organization, making them yield and unable to move. Ego noted that every single elite striker carries their own unparalleled weapon. Team C is tasked with identifying and polishing their unique weapons. Inside Team Z's shared room, each player identifies their unique weapons. Bachira's weapon is his dribbling. Raichi excels in his shooting technique. Gagamaru is great at close quarter plays. Narahaya can fly across the pitch. 
Lemon is a jack of all trades. Egaguri has an unyielding fighting spirit. Kunigami's left foot has a strong shooting power. Imamura has excellent speed and technique. Kyuan has exceptional jumping power. This leaves Izugi and Chijuri. Izugi has a hard time distinguishing his weapon. Izugi asks for a little bit of time to think of his weapon. Kyuan then asks Chijuri about his weapon. However Chijuri does not want to tell it. Raichi found Chijuri's actions arrogant and then asks the team to move on without Chijuri and Izugi's weapons identified, taking the lead in strategizing. Kyuan tells the team that each player must learn how to utilize their weapons to the fullest. Lemon then asked if Kyuan's suggestion will not result in a playstyle similar to their performance in their previous game. Team Z's greedy and selfish playstyle led to the ultimate demise of the team. To avoid having a chaotic and self-centered match, Kyuan suggests the I'm the next 9 tactic. Each player will have 10 minutes to be the striker and display their weapons. After strategizing, Team Z went through special training. The training aims to unify Team Z as a team. Following the special training, the players go to the dining hall to eat. Izugi eats Nato. It is hinted that he has been eating Nato ever since he was at Blue Lock. While eating, Izugi reflects on what his weapon could be. After a few minutes, Kunigami appears. Kunigami thanks Izugi for passing the ball to him. Izugi then asks Kunigami why he plays football. Kunigami says that it's simple. He plays so that he can be a football superhero. Izugi noted that the resolution that Kunigami has is what he lacks. Kunigami then offers Izugi a plate of steak. Kunigami shows to Izugi the goal exchange system. He then explains that for every goal a player scores, you can exchange it for various stuff. 1 point for 300g sirloin steak. 3 points for a cell phone return. 5 points for a high quality bed. Lashley, 10 points for a day outside. Kunigami shares the steak with Izugi, believing that he deserves half the credit for it. While eating, Kunigami asks Izugi why he passed to him and not to Raichi. On the other hand, Raichi was in a better spot and unmarked. Izugi laughs and tells Kunigami that he passed unconsciously, like a reflex. Kunigami suggested that Izugi's weapon may be the ability to smell the goal. Team Y vs Team Z Kyuan tells Team Z that Team Y is in a similar situation with them. Like Team Z, if Team Y loses, they will be up for elimination and unable to recover. Kyuan also warns the team to watch out for Hibiki Okawa. For this match, Team Z will be using the I'm the next 9 strategy. There will be a rotation for the players performing as forward. To fully grasp the potential of each member's weapons, every member of Team Z must support the main forward and wait for their turn. Chijuri however asks to remain in the defensive. He shows no interest in being in the offensive. Because of this, each player will have 10 minutes to exhibit their weapon. The first forward of Team Z is Bachira. Bachira easily broke through by himself using his super solo strategy. Nonetheless, Bachira was caught unprepared when Nico stole the ball from behind. Izugi remarks that, like Team Z, Team Y has its own strategies. After a few minutes, Bachira tries once more, but 10 minutes have already passed. The next striker is Kunigami. Kunigami's weapon relies on his teammates to bring the ball to his zone while he focuses on staying unmarked. Fortunately, a teammate passes the ball to Kunigami. Kunigami kicks the ball, hoping to score, but was blocked by two players from Team Y. The ball continues to be stolen from one team to the other. While playing, Izugi noticed that Okawa has not been moving for some time. Suddenly, Okawa moved. Apparently, Okawa was precisely waiting for the right time to attack. Izugi concluded that Team Z was able to attack only because Team Y allowed them to attack. All this time, Okawa was waiting for Nico to give him a signal to attack. Okawa, in possession of the ball, runs towards the goal. Izugi believes that Team Z fell into Team Y's trap. Lemon, new to the position of goalkeeper, failed to block Okawa's pass. This inevitably resulted in Okawa scoring a goal. The score is now 1-0. It is hinted that Okawa's weapon is his super shooting. To avoid another goal by Team Y, Team Z decided on having two players mark Okawa. Izugi deduced that Team Y's tactic was to hold out and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. Izugi believes that, to defeat Team Y, they must stop Okawa from scoring. Meanwhile, Team Z is still employing their, I'm the next 9, strategy. For Team Z, the next forward will be Kyuan. 
to fully utilize Qon's power. Team Z attempts to pass the balls at a very tall height to put the opposite team at a disadvantage. This however proves to be difficult since Team Y has an excellent defense. Struggling to pass the ball, Kunigami overlooked Nico's presence. Nico used this opportunity to steal the ball from Kunigami and pass it to his teammate. This shocked Izugi since he thought that Nico would pass it to Okawa, who was great at scoring. The game continues. As each minute passes, Team Z is losing their chance for victory. 45 minutes have passed. Inside the break room, players of Team Z is shown having mixed emotions, none of which is positive. With a score of 1 to 0, Chidori questions if the uh, I'm the next 9 tactic is effective. Chidori's doubts angered Raichi. Raichi believes Chidori is in no place to complain, seeing that Chidori chose to conceal his weapons from the team. Once again, Team Z is in dispute. Kyuan steps us to stop the conflict. Kyuan argues that their current strategy is working and that there is no need to change anything. Izugi in his head, wonders if doing so is the right choice. The second half of the game starts with Team Y in possession of the ball. Following Team Z's strategy, Imamura will be the main forward for these 10 minutes. Imamura however is having a hard time using his weapons since the opponent has the ball. To Imamura, football is like love, a girl that is out of his league. That girl is like Team Y. Once Imamura gets past that girl, he'll win him over. A teammate passes the ball to him. Imamura kicks the ball, hoping to score to a goal. Unfortunately, Imamura's efforts were unsuccessful. To prove that Imamura's efforts were not in vain, Gagamara comes to the rescue. Gagamara tries to score using his head, but fails. Ten minutes have passed, and Gagamaru is the next main forward. Twenty minutes have passed in the second half, but Team Z hasn't scored yet. To avoid losing again, to secure victory, to stay longer in blue lock, Izugi decided to trust his premonitions. In an instant, Izugi chose to trust his instincts. In the middle of the heated game, Izugi realizes that he was wrong. Not just mistaken, the whole Team Z was tricked. Izugi learned that it wasn't Okawa who they need to keep watch of. Instead, it was Nico pulling all the shots for Team Y. The core of Team Y was Nico, not Okawa. Nico has been maintaining Team Y's defensive and offensive stability. Nico has been Team Y's secret leader. This shocking information led Izugi to the decision that he must put a stop to Nico. Bachira passes the ball to Izugi drives the ball towards the goal to score. Before the ball reaches the net, Nico stops it. Luckily, Gagamaru rebounds the ball. In the court, Nico reveals to Izugi that if it weren't for him, Okawa would have scored his second goal. If that had happened, Team Y would have already won. Nico also tells Izugi that they have the very same eyes, but Izugi cannot win against him. According to Nico, he is in control of the game right now. At Team Z's monitoring room, Team Z is preparing for their upcoming match. Iman informs them that Team W's key players are the Wanama brothers, Keisuke Wanama and Junichi Wanama. When the twins played against Barrow's team, the brothers scored four goals combined. Isagi then tells the others that the twins are useless when they are isolated. Iman agrees with him, saying that to defeat Team W, they must split them apart. Kyuan then comes to the monitoring room after taking a long bath. Kyuan tells the team that for their next game, they will follow an improved version of their tactic. Kyuan calls this new strategy, the 3x3 All-Stars, tactic. Aiman and Chigiri is not part of this tactic. Instead, Aiman will be the goalkeeper, while Chigiri would rather stay on the defensive again. The game between Team W and Team Z starts. The Wanama brothers have the ball. Team Z tries to stop the twins from passing through, but they failed to do so. Keisuke tells Team Z that their weapon is their eye contact. While playing, Keisuke notices Chigiri. Keisuke insults Chigiri, asking him if HEW was the genius with the glass knee. It is revealed that Chigiri, Keisuke, and Junichi belonged to the same school club then. While passing through Chigiri, Keisuke tells him that his football career has come to an end. Keisuke also warned Chigiri, stating that he might snap his fragile knees again. While Keisuke is busy threatening Chigiri, Isagi steals the ball from him. Isagi tells Chigiri to ignore the twins' threats and warnings. Isagi says to Chigiri that unlike Chigiri, he doesn't have a past he can boast about. Because of this, Isagi came to Blue Lock to sharpen his skills. Through football, Isagi aims to change his life. The ball is passed from one player to the other in Team Z. 
Kyuan receives the ball last and scores a goal. After that, Isagi declares to Chigiri that doesn't care about his past but instead who he is now. The score is now 0 to 1, with Team Z in the lead. Serving as Junichi spokesperson, Keisaki scolds his teammates for not being skilled defenders. The game resumes with a score of 0 to 1. Team Z in the lead. Junichi has the ball but it seems like he does not want to score. A half-hearted Junichi made it easy for Kunigami to steal the ball from him. Kunigami then passed the ball to Bachira, seeing Kyuan open and unmarked. Bachira kicks the ball to him. Fortunately, Kyuan receives the ball and scores a goal. The score is now 2-0. 30 minutes have passed in the first half of the game. Following their new tactic, the three forward players will be Gagamaru, Raichi, and Naruhaya. To stop Naruhaya, who has the ball, Junichi grabs Naruhaya's jersey. Because this is a foul from Team W, Team Z is given a free kick. Bachira, doing the free kick, sees his target. Instead of scoring by himself, he kicks at a height advantageous to only one player Kyuan. Kyuan hits the ball with his head, scoring another goal. The new score is 3-0, with Kyuan scoring all of those three points. With three points in the lead, Team Z can't help but feel optimistic. In Team Z's locker room, the players exchange laughs and jokes. Confident that they'll win this match, Isagi believes that the team is getting stronger. While exiting the locker room to continue their match, Isagi asks Chigiri if he still wants to give up. The second half of the game starts. Raichi has the ball. Kyuan then tells Raichi to slow down and asks for the ball. Raichi says that Kyuan better give it back to him later. After Kyuan received the ball, Keisaki appears from Kyuan's back and steals the ball. Raichi gets mad and calls Kyuan an idiot. Keisaki with the ball, appears in front of Aiman. Aiman believes he can handle Keisaki. However, Keisaki passes to Junichi. With Aiman focused on Keisaki, Junichi was able to score a goal and the score is now 3-1. Kyuan tells his team to not panic over one score. Oddly, Kyuan then kicks the ball to Isagi. The pass back, however, was short, allowing Junichi to steal it. Junichi strikes again, changing the score to 2 to 3. Meanwhile, Raichi shouts at Kyuan for being reckless. Kyuan apologizes wholeheartedly, making the others accept his mistakes. Oddly enough, Isagi saw Kyuan smile cunningly after his teammates have dispersed. Isagi is left confused as to why Kyuan smiled after having the opponent score twice. Unsure of what he saw, Isagi rubs off his doubt as just an imagination. The match resumes with only 15 minutes left. The scores are currently 2-3. Igaguri tells the team that to win, the only thing they need to do is maintain the current score of both teams. However, just in case, they should score another goal as insurance. Team Z tries to create a breakthrough but they are unsuccessful in doing so. Meanwhile, a frustrated and distracted Isagi is easily caught off guard by Junichi. Junichi steals the ball from Isagi. Seeing Team W's excellent defense, Isagi sends something wrong. Team W is perfectly countering Team Z's weapons. Isagi can't sense the smell of the goal at all. Isagi believes that there is a traitor among Team Z who leaked information about them. Isagi then remembers Kyuan's smile, still hesitant to accept his guess. Isagi confronts Kyuan, asking him if he betrayed the team. Before Kyuan can answer, the twins tell Isagi that his guess hits the mark. Keisaki tells them that Kyuan shared with Team W everyone's strengths and weaknesses. It is then revealed that Kyuan met with Team W when Team Z was strategizing, as an excuse for being late for their meeting. Kyuan told his team that he took a long bath. Raichi, provoked by the sudden revelation, attempts to punch Kyuan. Because of his violent behavior, Raichi is given a yellow card. The other players are then asked to return to their specific positions to resume the game. Igaguri then asks Kyuan why he betrayed the team. Kyuan calls the team stupid for believing that they could win against the opponents. Kyuan then tells his teammate that he will be Team Z's sole survivor. Unlike before, this match will now be a 12 against 10. Kyuan tells Isagi that he believes Team Z's victory and survival is unlikely. So in exchange for leaking their weapons, Team W will allow Kyuan to score three goals, thus making him the striker with the most goals on the team. After which, Kyuan remarks that Isagi is stupid and naive. Kyuan believes that bonds like teamwork won't work in blue lock. Ego is what will secure one's chance of winning and survival.
Kiwan explains that his ego derives from winning from betraying others. The current score is 4-3 with Team W in the lead. And, frustrated by Kiwan's sudden betrayal, Isagi vows to get his revenge. Unfortunately for Isagi, Kiwan leaked his weakness. Keisuke and Junichi guard Isagi, 